Hello, we are going into week two of the Enneagram Readathon. Well, it kind of already started a couple days ago, but I'm a little behind on my vlogs. So, we are on, what day is it? I think it's Monday night? It is, it is Monday night. And I am in between deciding if I'm going to continue on with the Punk 57. I told myself I'll make it to page 100 and then decide because I am just not sure if I am loving this one. But I do need to get to 25% of Behind the Red Door by Megan Collins. I'm going to try and do that tonight because I am buddy reading this with Nat. And I'm also trying to use this for one of the other team's prompts. I think it's Team 7? It's either Team 4 or Team 7's prompt. I think it's Team 4 because Nat's Team 4. So I need to read 25% of this so that I finish it by the end of this week. And I can also check in with her about what this is about. So I think I'm going to attempt to start this. And the font looks pretty big. So I hope that it's not going to be too intensive to read right now. Yeah, I'm going to read this and then decide what else I'm going to read for the rest of the week. I've already finished two of my team's prompts because last week I read Gravity of Us and I read, uh, what's it called? A Vow So Bold and Deadly. So that gave me two prompts and... To get my third prompt, I need to read a romance, which was supposed to be Punk 57, but I'm gonna have to change up for something else. Hi, so I don't even know the last time I checked in. It was definitely sometime last week, but I, I definitely did not complete all of my books that I was supposed to read during the Enneagram readathon because on Tuesday, all throughout the rest of the weekend, up until Saturday night, my aunt and my mom came over to my house and we were trying to fix up some of the things in my house, organize a bunch of stuff, and we decided to redo our family room. So we moved everything around, we painted, and it's still not 100% all done, but that took forever to do because there is so much stuff in this house. We kept just finding more and more random things in every nook and cranny of every single part of the family room. So that took a lot of time. So I did not even read until Saturday night. But I did finish Behind the Red Door and I ended up really liking it. Unfortunately, I can't count this for the Enneagram readathon because I did not finish a group read and I did not finish all my team's prompts. So I didn't get any points for this one, but I ended up really liking it. I don't want to say anything about it in case this is something that you are interested in, but this one is about a woman named Fern who is watching TV and sees on the news that a woman named Astrid has gone missing and she wholeheartedly believes that she knew this person. And so it's her kind of delving into to the delving into her own memories and trying to figure out how she knew this person and she's back in her hometown and she's kind of trying to go around and figure out why she feels like she knows this person so it was really interesting i really liked how it was written and i had a really fun time and i got a buddy read it with nat and she had a lot of the same opinions on this as i did so we both really enjoyed it so i'm glad that i found this in a little free library one time and i actually liked it but the only other book that I needed to finish was Punk 57 and I got halfway through and I'm not DNFing it, but I'm not enjoying it either. I would say that I like how it's written, but I don't like Misha in this story. He is just, he's not a very good person and I feel like he's really entitled and it's just very frustrating to see a male character be written as somebody who turns into a bully because the woman that he likes isn't exactly how he expected her to be he's punishing ryan for not being the person that he had built up in his head and it's it's just kind of gross to read about a character who's doing something like that. So I am not liking it very much. I also don't like that it's set in high school. I've said that many times before that I really don't like high schoolers in sexual situations. And this is definitely that, but they are both 18. So I guess you can excuse it, but I still really dislike that part of it. But yeah, Misha is a bully and it's stupid why he is a bully because he just didn't get what he wanted out of the girl that he thought he knew when they were just pen pals. I think I do like Ryan though. I kind of understand where she's coming from. She is not the nicest girl, but it's explained that she is not very nice because she was picked on a lot and she just kind of built up that wall around herself and kind of became a mean girl in her own, which doesn't make her a good person, but I kind of understand where she's coming from. So I feel bad that she's being picked on by somebody who is supposed to care about her. I don't know, and he's lying to her, so. There's just a lot of wrong in this book, but I don't know when I'll finish this. I'll probably just take my time and get through it because it's 
it's not calling to me i don't really want to pick it up very often but i will someday finish this this is definitely not a very long vlog and i was planning to do another video separate for everything that i got at barnes and noble on friday because me and my mom heard about the 50 percent off sale and we went to barnes and noble and i think i'm going to include that in this video so this is all i did for the enneagram but i'm also going to show you what i got at barnes and noble i need to go grab all those books okay so these are all of the books that me and my mom picked up from barnes and noble we were looking at all of the tables and a few of the five to eight dollar bins and stuff that they had around there we went to two different barnes and nobles because we th we thought the first one didn't have a very wide selection and then we went to the second one and that had an even smaller selection so we did end up with quite a few if you can tell but they were all just books that we were reading the synopsises for and talking about if we thought that they would be books that we would both read there are a few on here that i wanted to read that she wasn't really interested in and a few that she got that i w that i'm not really interested in so we are just leaving them at my house for now until i read them because i read a little bit faster than my mom does so i guess i will just tell you what each of these are about and I don't know. <laughs> Here's my book haul. Okay, so the first one I'm pulling off the shelf is The Cape Doctor by E.J. Levy, and it seems to be about a doctor who pretended to be a male to get into the medical profession, but then found that life as a male was better for them, it seems like, and then there becomes a scandal when they are publicly accused of a homosexual affair because this is happening in Ireland, I guess, in... It doesn't say what time period this is, but it happened sometime in Ireland and that seemed to not go over very well. So I felt like this sounded pretty interesting. I'm not sure if the character is actually trans or is just pretending to be a man to get by in society and do what they want to do in their profession. So I'm interested, interested to see how that plays out. Okay, then I picked up Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson, and it seems to be about a woman named Brie who has grown up with a mother who tells her that the world is dark and scary, and Brie doesn't really believe her. She goes on to have a family, and one day it says she sees a witch or something, an old gray-haired woman dressed in black, and on a day that she sees that same woman, her son disappears, and she finds out that her son was taken by another mother, and she seems to be entangled and trying to get her son back but then she's getting mixed up with some dangerous or criminal things and it kind of reminded me of the chain which seems to be a similar premise where a mother's child gets kidnapped and then that mother has to kidnap another child so that's what it kind of seems like i haven't read the chain yet i really do want to so it might be something that i pick up and kind of read at the same time to see if they are similar in premise or not but i thought it sounded good my mom said she would not want to read this one so this is another one that I thought sounded super interesting, but my mom didn't really want to read it. It's called We Are Watching Eliza Bright, and it's by A.E. Osworth, and it's about a woman, Eliza, who is a video game coder, and I guess one day she reports harassment in her workplace, and she ends up getting fired, she gets doxxed, and a bunch of male gamers seem to go up against her and are harassing her and stalking her, and things get go from cyberbullying to violence in her actual life and it seems to be about women trying to find their place in the gaming community so it sounds pretty interesting to me because i do know a lot of females just don't get treated as well as male gamers in that world so i thought it would be fun to read something like this and it does seem like kind of a thriller too like very suspenseful in it because it just seems like she's in a lot of danger so i am interested to see what this one is all about then my mom picked out the girls are also nice here by Lori elizabeth flynn and it seems to be like a mystery thriller about a woman named ambrosia who gets invited to her 10-year reunion and the note says something about we need to talk about what we did that day or that night and the final paragraph of this says, alternating between the reunion and Am's freshman year, The Girls Are Also Nice Here is a shocking novel about the brutal things girls will do to get what they think they're owed and what happens when the games we play in college become matters of life and death. 
so it sounded very mysterious and a little creepy so i'm excited to read this one i was surprised my mom would pick something like this because she usually just goes for romance my mom also picked out jennifer weiner's that summer and i think i've seen this cover a lot but i don't think i know anything about it so let me read what it says this one seems to be about a woman named daisy who is kind of struggling with where she's at in life i guess her daughter's rebelling her husband and her aren't really getting along and she starts to get emails that are meant for a woman named diana and they end up meeting up and then realizing that their pasts are kind of intertwined so i don't know if this is supposed to be a thriller-esque or if it's just about two women whose worlds collide and it helps them be more comfortable with their lives i don't really know what type of story this is going to be but it does sound pretty interesting so then i picked out the world gives way by marissa levian and it seems to be about a woman who is under contract to do a bunch of different jobs by some man and then one day the man dies and she is left to take care of his orphan daughter and they're kind of running away from secrets and a really bad life so i thought it sounded interesting my mom thinks it sounds kind of interesting too so we decided to get this one but it has the least dis descriptive description of most of these books so i'm not entirely sure what this one's about but i thought it sounded kind of cool and then I picked up Promise by Min Rose Gwen, and it's about a tornado that happens in the 1930s, and these two women, I guess, survive, and I think they find a baby, and they're trying to make it through this aftermath of this tragedy. So I thought it sounded kind of cool. I'm not really sure any more about it, but I don't know, tornadoes sound kind of interesting to me. So I also really do like historical fiction. So it just had a lot of things that I found interesting. And then we grabbed Everything After by Jill Santopolo. And it looks like it's about a woman named Emily who gave up some of the things that she loved when she was younger and ended up on a different path in life than she ex expected. But one day she hears the song of a man that she used to love and it seems like she ends up having to decide between the love that she's with now or a past love that she gave up a long time ago. So it sounded just like the type of romance that me and my mom <laughs> used to read. So we thought that this one was one that we should pick up. Then we grabbed The Removed by Brandon Hobson, which seems to be about the Akota family, and their teenage son was killed in a police shooting. The mother is struggling to help her husband with his Alzheimer's, and it says their daughter Sonia leads a life of solitude, punctuated by spells of dizzying romantic obsession, and their remaining son Edgar uh, turns to drugs to meet his feelings and I guess on an annual bonfire they all come together and it seems that their normal life and the spiritual world start to blend and it seems pretty heartbreaking and I don't know it sounded pretty interesting especially with the spiritual side and it also talks about Edgar after a suicide attempt he is finding himself in the mysterious darkening land a place between the living and the dead where old atrocities echo so it just sounded very intriguing so i'm very excited for this one then we grabbed things lost to the water by eric Nguyen, and it's about a family who moved to new orleans from vietnam and it's the mother and her two young sons and she sends money back to vietnam in hopes that she can reunite with her husband and he can move to new orleans but eventually she realizes that that is never going to happen and he is never going to join them in the states and it's about their lives in the midst of their father not being able to come and live with them and it seems that one of the sons is trying to embrace his new his burgeoning sexuality about them trying to find their heritage again and whatnot so i thought it sounded really good also another one that sounds just pretty heartbreaking but i am looking forward to reading this one for sure this is one we picked up because we both really like italy we've been there once but we never got to go to sicily but it's called auntie poldy and the sicilian lions and it's about a 60 year old woman named auntie poldy who retires to sicily i guess while she's living there a handsome young handyman goes missing and is discovered murder and she can't help but get herself mixed up in this mystery so i don't know if it's supposed to be funny or if it's kind of a thriller but the cover makes it look like it's supposed to be a little bit silly we just thought it sounded fun and it's set in italy which how could you not read a book set in italy i don't know it just sounds so wonderful there this is random but i picked up a palmistry book i don't know if it's any good but it just sounded kind of fun and it was only 
I think it was even half off of this, so it might have been four bucks. Then we picked up A Chance of a Lifetime by Jude Devereaux and Tara Sheets. And it seems to be about a man and a woman who fell in love when they were really young and fate did not like that they were together so they got separated and I guess angels come into the picture and the man's name is Liam and the woman's name is Cora and Liam is then later in life tasked to make Cora fall in love with another man and Cora does, does not want anything to do with anything that Liam is doing because I guess she's more hardened now in her life and I'm sure that they probably fall in love. <laughs> I don't know. My grandma has a lot of Jude Devereaux books so we were kind of picking books that we have historical romances and mass market paperbacks and everything of so Jude Devereaux was definitely one of those authors so there might even be another one on the shelf too. Then I finally got The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. I've been wanting to get this one for a while. It's been on my wish list for a very long time but it was on one of Barnes and Noble's tables for read it before the movie or TV show comes out. So it looks like it's going to be a Prime original series on Prime Video, which makes me pretty excited. But it is about a woman named Cora who one day is told by a man named Caesar t that she can go with him on the Underground Railroad. And it's, I guess, about their journey going through that. And I've heard great things about this book, so I definitely have been wanting to pick this one up, so I'm glad that I saw that. I don't think this one was a 50% off, I just wanted to get it anyway. Then we got Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus by Dustin Bowling, and this was on a table of local authors, and this book is actually set in Arizona, and it's about a woman or a girl named Avon who is 13 years old. She was born without arms, and her parents make her move to a different school because they are moving closer to a theme park that they just got and she's struggling to make friends but eventually she meets a man I keep saying man a boy named Connor who is a classmate who also has a disability and I guess there's a mystery that happens within this so I think this is a middle grade I am not entirely positive but it sounded pretty cute and it's by a local author so we thought that it would be fun to pick up and read this one so this one is by Danielle Steele and it's called In His Father's Footsteps and it seems to be about two people who were concentration camp survivors who moved from Germany and I guess they were friends but then they ended up getting married and they have a son and it seems to be like a multi-generational story about the parents and then about the son who is a first generation American determined to be his own person and achieve success. So my mom thought it sounded interesting. I told her that if she likes it I will read it but I probably wouldn't pick it up unless I heard great things about it. So this one is called The Ugly Cry. It's a memoir by Danielle Henderson. I am just not really looking to read a memoir right now, but it seems to be about Danielle, whose mother abandoned her at 10 years old because her mother chose her drug-addicted, abusive boyfriend. And Danielle was raised by her grandparents, who thought that they were done raising kids, but ended up with her. So it seems to be about like her life and what she learned growing up through that. Another reason I don't think I could read it very much is because it does have a grandmother as a mother figure and I grew up really close to my grandma and I don't think I'm ready for reading a book like this but I did tell my mom again if it's really good I will read it but I, I don't think that it's a book I'm ready to read right now. Grandmother figures are just no-goes for me for the foreseeable future but it does sound good. I just don't think I'm ready for this type of book but my mom is really loving different memoirs right now so she really wanted to read this one too. This is one I'm like 99% positive I will never read and it's called The Sins of a Woman by Kimberly Lawson Robbie. This is one that my mom picked out. She thought it sounded interesting but it seems to be about a woman who is in a public divorce with her husband and she kind of decides to be as awful to him as she he was to her and she wants to like go for the jugular it seems in taking everything that was his and more and I just don't think it sounds like something I want but my camera's flashing so that means I have 30 seconds to tell you that the last one we got was Met Her Match by Jude Devereaux. I finished it and I have a lot of thoughts and I don't know if I'm going to be able to articulate them very well but overall I hated this book so much. <laughs> I hated the characters 
quite a bit. I liked Ryan a lot more than I liked Misha, but I despised Misha the entire time. And maybe there was like a good five page chunk that I felt sympathetic to him. But other than that, he was a piece of shit. And I do not know why anyone would like him. Trying to stick to some positives, I will say that the writing felt pretty captivating. It was very readable and I enjoyed how most of the plot went like I felt like things were moving forward there were some mysteries here and there that were answered later on and everything tied together and the romance was interweaved with that within the plot in a way that I do like in books but I just did not like this romance so I can see why people would like this if they are fans of bully romances if they are fans of the trope is it a trope or is it just an element of one of the characters lying to the other character it's like a what is it a two-person love triangle where one person is pretending to be somebody else I don't if you're interested in things like that it is good i'm not a fan of bully romances though and this is not what i wanted it to be and misha just really bothered me as a character because he was so entitled he so pretty much the entire premise of this is that they were pen pals and when misha finds out who ryan actually is he's pissed because she is not the caring gentle person that he thought she was and so when he shows up under a false name at her school he is just so mean to her and he embarrasses her and makes her cry all the time and he makes her feel really dumb and bad about herself all the time but he's like an attractive tall mysterious bad boy so of course she's all into it and he's very possessive he every time something doesn't go his way he is very volatile he just is so rude and tries to tear her down in just certain ways to make her feel worthless and then when she's actually hurt he's like oh i'm sorry you're wonderful blah 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 and he takes it all back and then it's just very manipulative and i hope that no one desires relationships like this and that you want something way more healthy for yourself but i do understand if people like watching that sort of drama and the way that they can just be so mean to each other and then still find romance in the end like i get that part but i just really hope that this is not a romance that people are like oh my gosh i want that for myself because he was terrible to her he made her feel so awful for no for no good reason especially when they were just pen pals and they had chosen to never meet up because ryan in one of her letters to him had said that he wouldn't like her if he met her so she was spelling it out for him all along and he still treated her like garbage because she wasn't what he expected her to be and, and just ugh. he was terrible i hate him very much but i do think people will like it i'm just so not interested in bully romances and just what this ended up being was not for me and i did not like that they were in high school oh i do have to say the epilogue doesn't make any sense in this book misha is a musician he's in a band and they're 18 in the book and it seems like they're like well into their 18th year of life but then the epilogue says it's five years later and it says that misha and ryan both go to college and then after that, Misha pursues his music career and starts to get really, really famous. But Ryan is six months pregnant also in this epilogue. That's only five years after. So the timeline doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> so that's another like nitpicky thing that I didn't like. But those are my thoughts on it. I did not DNF. I, I probably should have, but the rating is pretty good. And if you really do like bully romances, then I think this one is probably well done. I don't read any, so I don't know. But I was not a fan. So if you also do not like romances like that, stay away. <laughs> but yes, I have officially finished this. And my next clip will probably just be the outro. All right, I think I'm going to end the vlog right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to have a video out on Friday. I want to do the read, rewrite, burn game because I've been thinking about that a lot. And every time I see people do that, it sounds so fun. But then Wednesday, 
I am going to be doing a vlog solely dedicated to this friend right here. I've never read a Sarah J Mass book before and I definitely obviously have not read A Court of Thorns and Roses so I think I'm going to do full spoiler every single thought that I have on this book. I don't think I'll do any more in the series just because I have other books I need to read by the end of the month but yeah. I'm kind of excited, kind of nervous. I hope I like it. I hope I'm not going to end up shitting on a bunch of people's favorite book. So this will be on Wednesday. So if you want to see all of my thoughts for this book, please subscribe and let me know if you think I'm going to like this based on the books that I have already been reading. All right, I will see you in my next video. Bye.